I just got done watching this video called Why Your Wife Won't Have Sex With You Anymore. And let's just say it stirred a little bit of stuff up in me. So have you ever heard of the praying mantis? What they do is they wait and the male comes and he flaps his wings and he goes to mount her and she turns around, and she bites off his head. Women, that's what we're doing to our men these days. And I'm gonna explain more after the show reel. All right, so let's start with the basics. First of all, there's a lot of reasons why couples stop having sex. And the stereotype in our society is that women are frigid and after marriage, they just don't wanna have sex. Well, yes, there are hormones that shift both in males and in females after we've been in a relationship for a long time. That's a little bit natural. But what really gets to me is how women, we start throwing our men under the bus. We say, oh, he only touches me when he wants sex. Was there a time where you actually wanted to be touched? Where you actually were excited that he touched you for sex? For many relationships, that's true. And if that's true for you, then what happened? Have you ever heard of the term confirmation bias? Confirmation bias is when we see what we want to see. For example, if I believe that my partner only wants me for sex. My brain is going to start looking for all the ways that that feels true. Because that's the way our body works. That's the way our mind works. It's kind of like when you decide to buy a red car and then all of a sudden you notice all the red cars on the road, right? Or you've never heard of a certain type of meditation and then all of a sudden everybody's talking about this type of meditation, right? It's like once it comes in your awareness, it becomes more obvious and your brain starts picking up on it. And this is what happens in our relationships as well. So sometimes when we're not speaking what we want and what we need to our partners, or if we're not getting it or receive it in exactly the way that we think we should, we stop seeing the way that our partner is making an effort. And then suddenly we turn that around as women and be like, oh, he only touches me when he wants sex. Instead of seeing like, oh, he actually tried to help me with dinner over there. He actually, you know, put the hose out and he watered my flowers for me or he mowed the lawn or he complimented me on something. And we forget because all we're noticing is the touch on the back when we're doing dishes and feeling a bit overwhelmed and being like, ah, oh, I knew it. So why are we doing that to ourselves? And why are we doing that to our partners in a relationship that we care about? And I'm using the stereotype of women towards men because this is how the videos were, right? It was actually the video I watched on why your wife won't sleep with you is actually shaming men for not doing enough for women. And I say F that because a lot of women are also not doing very well for their men out there. They're not taking the time to give them what they need. They're not asking about what they want and need. And I'm not just talking about the sexual realm. I'm talking about in all ways. We cannot blame our partner for not giving us what we need if we can't communicate that clearly. And are there times where those two things come at a head? Of course. If I want someone strong and powerful to come in and just romance me for nights on end before I have sex, that might be at odds with my partner being like, I want it spontaneous and quick and unplanned. Right? So how do we make both happen? Because remember, as we started our relationship, both of these things were able to happen. That's usually why we were in a gotten relationship, right? Is both of our needs were actually getting met in some way. So what's changed and how can we come back to that for the health of our relationship and the health of our partnership? So remember, no matter who you are, when you're upset at your partner and you go to your friends and start bitching about what they're doing or not doing, what they're saying or not saying, how they're acting or not acting, of course your friends are going to be there for you and they're going to tell you exactly that it's okay to feel that way and it is okay to feel that way. Don't get me wrong. But are you also saying that to your partner? Or are you saying these things over and over again? And remember, the more you say something, the more real it is. The more your brain actually looks for that. Um, belief perseverance happens, which means that no matter how many things to the contrary happen to what you believe, your brain will only see what it wants to. For example, if I think I'm a really great driver 
and I tell everybody how great of a driver I am, but I'm getting in an accident every week, but I tell everybody I'm a super great driver, but all these people around me keep hitting me. Maybe I'm actually not a great driver. Does that make sense? So the same thing can happen in our relationships. Right? So now I'm just like some praying mantis where every time my partner comes up and touches me, I bite his head off and he walks away feeling rejected, alone, unwanted, unneeded. And then I go bitch to my friends about how he doesn't do anything for me and he doesn't care. Well, of course, look what I just did to him. So that's why it's so important to come back together and really communicate. It's hard. I know it's hard. It's hard to come to compromise. It feels like something sucky to talk about. But if you can't have the level of emotional intimacy to actually talk about how to make your sex life better, or you can have good sex, right? Like sex is supposed to be about intimacy on a physical realm. You need all kinds of intimacy, right? So here's my challenge for you is I want you when your friends are complaining about their significant other and what they're doing or not doing, when you notice yourself complaining about your significant other and what they're doing or not doing, take a step back and notice what patterns are you falling into? Where are you making judgments, assumptions? Have you communicated clearly? And I mean really clearly and asked for what you want. Have you really sat down and say, I want you to do things for me because that makes me feel wanted. Or, hey, when you put the stuff in the dishwasher away wrong, and I have to redo it, it makes me feel like I'm unheard, which makes me feel disconnected and disrespected, right? Have you been that level of clear with your partner? So step back, stop supporting other people bitching about their relationship, stop bitching about your own relationship and be proactive. Find the reason why you love and care for that person. I'm not saying accept toxicity. I'm not saying accept abuse. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about in normal, healthy, loving relationships. So remember, you and your partner are love. You're both loving. You are both lovable. So stop the BS. Stop the stereotyping. Feel the love. And freaking communicate, would ya? See you in the next video.